Maybe a fun experience then would be to pontificate on the future of wallets. Five, 10 years from now, I think it's going to be a very different situation. We're going to get broadband for wallets, right? <laughs> no yeah, longer yeah, have to deal yeah, with modem yeah. dial-ups, right? Yeah. Um, so why don't we play a little game here? Um, what do you think is going to be the biggest notable difference five, 10 years down the road? How are wallets going to change in a really meaningful way? So I think there's the, the whole experience, right? Like we, we have all these Lego blocks that just don't like really harmoniously work together. I think there'll be a lot more abstractions uh, still maintaining true to, to being decentralized. Um, the experience one is going to be simpler. And two, I think the wallet itself, I don't think the wallet in five to 10 years has even been built. I think to get there, we need first a simple experience, right? Even when you and I were just walking through this, like how to buy an NFT experience, like it's just like, like you say, we just keep going down the rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. I want the like, the buy now Amazon checkout button for buying an NFT, right? One click type of type of experience. And I think that's like really, really, really important. Um, second though, to like make that real, um, we need to have safety and simplicity, right? And, and it needs to be really safe and transparent for the user. So when we're signing transactions, when we're engaging with Web3, like how do we have the safety first features in mind? that allow people to engage in activities they care about, right? Um, so I think that's like number two. And then the third is accessibility, right? So I'm talking like sort of table stakes, and then I'll get to like the five to 10 year wallet, which is like a Swiss army knife of everything. But the table stakes is accessibility. So right now, if you even think about gas fees, and gas fees are just the amount of, think of it like giving a tip to a blockchain validator or a miner. Um, it's the amount of money you have to spend uh, to get a transaction validated on the blockchain. So Ethereum right now is super congested. Gas fees are high. Uh, they, they are a roadblock, right? $50 is, is, an, is not nothing, right? And so building on accessibility and more scalable on-ramps or L2, like layer two solutions or layer one solutions that are more efficient, making the ability to transact in Web3 far more scalable, which leads to accessibility. So making those transactions cost cheaper. I think when you get the ease of use on onboarding, you get that accessibility and you get that security, then we start building out flywheels. So now I think five to 10 years, I think email logins are going to be gone. And I'm, I'm going to be so thrilled about that. I'll just be able to like click, you know, sign with my wallet and it proves I am who I am. But I think like five to 10 years, I think wallet and that identity management is going to actually be key uh, a key primitive to many apps. So these are like gaming apps, um, VR type apps, finance apps, or even like social apps. So I think we'll see a prolif proliferation of apps that are dependent on key management and wallets. But I also think you'll start seeing wallets that start becoming Swiss army knives um, uh, of the future. Wallets are the focal point of your activity and identity in a new Web3 world. And to the extent you're bullish on Web3, on what crypto can accomplish, on the primitives being created, on the ability for us to engineer amazing things out of all these Lego bricks, well, the wallet's going to be a very critical part of that. And I mean, you got a tough, tough sell if you want to tell me that that stuff's not, <laughs> not going to be an expansive, interesting world. It's going to be a very expansive, interesting world. The internet started out as just this kind of like niche, weird little zone that people could go off and email each other or participate in news groups or chat rooms or whatever, but it was very localized. There wasn't a lot of connectivity between the internet and the real world. But as the internet grew and developed and matured, more and more companies integrated the internet. More and more got a web page. More and more let users access their services online. And suddenly there was a bit of a tipping point, right? Right around when I, the iPhone launched, when it really became ubiquitous. Suddenly we're carrying around internet browsers in our pockets. And now everything is on the internet. And we're going to see a similar wave in crypto, at least that's my opinion here. Right now it's niche, it's localized, it's a little bit weird and abstract, but we can all look at the future where all these different services and companies connect to a blockchain somehow, and your wallet is your browser, is your iPhone for that world. That's right. That's absolutely right. And mm -hmm. I think that's 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 the future I'm excited about, honestly. Me too. And, <laughs> and, yeah, it's, it's Hard just not to be a excited, really huh? cool like marriage of yeah. uh, paradigm shift in technology that brings community and inclusivity uh, that like anyone can participate in. Just how do we make it accessible? Yeah. I think it's a great place to end, to be honest. Um, I guess I would encourage our listeners, you know, if you're new to crypto, uh, put your foot in the water, 
get the custodial app. You know, it's going to be a curated, smooth experience. It's going to be trusted. And if you want to participate in some of the bleeding edge things, at least today, a self-custodial wallet is the way to do it. Yeah. Um, and so check it out, Coinbase Wallet on the App Store.